Welcome to Swiss Impact with Banerjee's. I'm Svetlana. And I'm Ben. In season two, we will be traveling around the globe, out of Switzerland, and bring amazing leaders from businesses, thought leaders, political leaders, of course, investors and experts. We are working at implementing and work realizing all the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, better known as SDGs. And they are also making profit. Hello, I am Amina Gurifakim and I'm the sixth president of the Republic of Mauritius. My name is Parvati and I'm a musical artist and the founder and CEO of Parvati Foundation. I'm Alicia Adishmita. I'm an entrepreneur here in I'm running on one side a financial services a company. You know, hundreds of deal, deals a month, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. are seeing more things happening in this impact world. And this is yeah. because, look, the world is changing. So join us to discover impact investing every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Central European time at Swiss Impact with Benedict. See you on Friday at Swiss Impact. <laughs> Good morning, afternoon, and ev evening to everyone and from our viewers from Far East. A good night. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to Swiss Impact with Banerjee. We are so happy to see you all and welcome to our channel. And today is actually already the week 16 of season two. And for those who are new, what are we doing here? So we interview global leaders, investors, amazing projects, policymakers, experts, academics on the topic of impact investment. And today it's actually a very interesting topic and it is your topic, Ben. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's your show today. It's about climate change. So the most important points of today's show is what are the new climate change policies being implemented for businesses? Also, what are the new business possibilities in the field of climate change? And last but not least, what are the resources available for such businesses? Okay, before we start, of course, I ask you all to su subscribe to our YouTube channel below and uh, hope to see you in the next videos. So, Ben, you want to say something yeah, before we start? I, before I start, I just want to say once again about our project Joya, which has been created to support COVID patients in India, in the rural parts of India, in the, and giving supplying hospitals and medical equipments to them. And thank you all who have been supporting us most generously. And everybody else, if you want to support us, you can find all information on the website chamomile.ch and look for Project Joya Help India Against COVID. All your help is most, most welcome. So thank you also from my side to supporting the project, of course. And what I'd like to mention is our upcoming course in August 16, 17 and 26 of August, Profitable Business with Impact in action. <laughs> so this course will provide you with invaluable, uh, in <laughs> absolutely <laughs> valuable, <laughs> valuable insights on how to create profitable business with impact and implement it, how to raise uh, money successfully in the sector, how to incorporate SDGs and impact, how to set up your business processes, and of course, in more detail, what is impact investment, how to create your fundraising strategy, and find investors in this sector. So join us on the 16th, 17th, and 26th of August. All the information is on chamomile.ch in events. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Ben, what do you have as a story today? Let's start talking about uh, so climate to, change. Today, yeah, today is about climate change, so that's perfect. So the positive side is that EU Parliament has committed to cut its carbon emission by 55% by 2030, mm -hmm. compared with the 1990 levels. Sounds but, good. But as we have heard earlier from others, really not much has been realized on the ground level. Mm -hmm. Not even uh, one of our earlier speakers from the, the who is uh, leading the UNDP said not even a single EU member country is on the path or has implemented policies or is going to fulfill the Paris Agreement by reduction of the CO2 emission. 
So I'm very curious how EU is planning or Europe is planning to become the first zero carbon continent by 2050. Well, I which... think they are now taking vacation in the first <laughs> place, no? There, there was a very nice, interesting article in the Dutch newspaper because the Dutch government is now in a kind of uh, one government has collapsed, the new government mm -hmm. is in place. So so there's, there's no government, no ministry. And somebody wrote, well, the climate change does not wait for the new ministers to be put into place. So yeah, so what I wanted to add <laughs> To this is that the new laws which the the EU Commission has implemented or is uh, putting forward or is promoting is it beneficial only for the big companies because that really worries me because two very important parts the EU laws are not answering one is that the carbon emission of the products and services coming to Europe or which Europe is importing in is EU taxing it or controlling it? Because as long as EU will let untaxed or rest unrestricted products and services coming in from countries which are not paying that much per, uh, attention to its environmental policies or CO2 emission, EU will not only make it too difficult for its own companies, especially the small and medium companies, to compete mm -hmm. with cheaper products coming from abroad. But in reality, what EU is doing is that EU is importing no, sorry, exporting its CO2 emission abroad. So is that really signing, solving the problem? That's number one. Absolutely. Now, but the second point, I guess, it's about meat and dairy. Industry, exactly. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the two, the, the two uh, one of the main, I think we had also this discussion pre with our previous speakers, that one of the main CO2 contributor is the meat and dairy industry, which you mentioned. And I'm missing concrete steps from EU which will which will have to take unpopular steps and start telling especially the rich west europeans and the nordic europeans to start cutting down their meat consumption because they are already consuming meat higher than the eu average so why doesn't eu also start dealing with the meat industry just as it dealt in the past with the tobacco industry meaning forceful health warnings high taxes etc or will EU follow the same past precedences like the airbags in the car on nicotine in tobacco? It took many deaths and many disasters before the authorities came up with the right policies. Well, I think also it would be very cool when you buy meat, then it's written also that meat can cause a disease such as uh, heart disease and, of course, uh, cancer. Various types of cancer can be caused by the meat industry. So how would that be if people would see that on the package exactly. for eating that? So. Yeah, that was exactly the point. So, so with this, I would like to invite our two guests. And at, of course, it's one of our favorite topics, or at least mine. So, uh, I so, also like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, so today's guest is my colleague, and he's the chairman of the Climate Leadership Coalition, which is the largest non-profit climate business network in Europe, and it has 87 members employing more than half a million people globally. And they must have a lot of money, your members. <laughs> they have. <laughs> Believe me, <laughs> the members of CLC, they really have a lot of funds available. But before we invite our guests, maybe let's uh, see quickly for those who are new, the difference between impact investing and sustainability. And so it's very well explained what we are going to talk about today. Let's watch the video now. So if you are still mixing up what is impact, what is sustainability, what is responsible and sustainable investing, this is a video which will hopefully clarify it all. So here behind me, you see capital spectrum from financially only to impact only investments. So impact only are philanthropic capital, charities, and so on. Financial only are traditional investments which are driven by profit. In between, we have responsible, sustainable, and impact investments. So how are they different from each other? It all started with responsible investing. When some people couldn't sleep at night and they thought, Let's exclude certain industries like tobacco, alcohol, weapon industries, pornography out of our investment scope, and they call it responsible investing. So basically, it is in exclusion. All right. Some people thought it's not enough. We can do more and we should do more. Let's create environmental, social and governance criteria, ESG, and it is actually representing sustainable investing. What does it do? They reduce CO2 emissions. They 
empower women and put more women in top management positions, they reduce waste and so on. So basically here, you compare the companies and choose best in class based on environmental, social and governments criteria. Fair enough, but what is the difference to, to impact investing? Impact investing is making big step forward in a way that they are mission driven. So it is an underlying mission which is driving the whole impact investing sector. And of course, financial sustainability. So we are not talking about charity and philanthropy here. It is an investment, but it has an underlying mission and profit at the same time. But it's not yet deep enough. Let me show you one more slide where I hopefully I will clarify it even more. So when we look at sustainable and impact investing, we say that sustainable investors, they're generating broad impact on the surface. And nowadays, Apple, Microsoft, and other blue chips, they are creating broad impact and they are called sustainable nowadays, right? But, you know, without iPhone, I will not die out of hunger. And it is still profit driven. So it creates impact. They can change systems and they can um, also put new standards out in the world because they are so huge, but they're still profit driven. So don't forget about that. When we go to impact investors and impact companies, they are mission driven and there is an underlying mission. So they create deep impact, they change lives, they transform systems. And this is why it's so important to understand what is what in order to allocate the capital into impact investing. And I will show you terrifying numbers of uh, sustainable investing uh, world nowadays. So you see that more than 30, 30 trillion US dollars is already in sustainable investing. But what is the problem? The problem is that almost 20 out of the 30 trillions is allocated in this exclusion practice. So negative screening. So basically here, here you see the lowest chart negative uh, screening. It is making two thirds of the whole capital allocation where impact investing, doo -doo 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 -doo, it is here. Impact investing is just here. And it's still a tiny number compared to these trillions, 30 trillions. And this is why we are here with Camomile. We want to clarify also what is what. So more projects, more funds in impact investing would receive funds uh, from investors. So understand what is what in order to take the right action. The world is changing. Get into impact investing sector. Thank you for watching. Well, I think I, I always will put this video, you know, I don't need to talk or repeat the same thing over and over again. I really just uh, lean back now and watch. <laughs> Perfect. Although I liked how you were trying to find the numbers up there. Wow. So, but, <laughs> you need to make it some fun, not that people pay attention. Exactly. Okay, so now, now let's invite our guests. Exactly. Let's... So first I want to invite Carl Henrik Sernstrom. He's my colleague uh, from Cl Climate Leadership Coalition. He's the chairman of it. And he's uh, now joining us from Spain. <laughs> Hi, Carl. Hi. Hi, welcome. Thank you. And, and he's a member of the board of Molinlik, Vestas, and a lot of many other companies. And he's in also the chairman of Trackley, Baffin B Networks, chairman of tax delegation for Swedish businesses and commerce, and member of the board of Marcos Wallenberg Foundation. And Marcos is also a member of CLC. Kale has been the CEO of Stero Enso from 2014 to 2019. And December 2019, this Kale, I'll need an explanation from you. He, you have been awarded uh, the first class of the Order of the Lion from Finland by the president of Finland for long-term work benefiting Finnish industries. How did you manage that? You are Swedish. Yes, but uh, Stero Enso is a Finnish company. And I worked previously in my other jobs also with Finland. So it was a recognition from the Finnish president for the services I done for the country or the Republic of Finland. So I, I was very, very proud of getting that uh, 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 order. 
Okay, congratulations. And, and with this, we also invite Prachi. She has a very complicated family name, uh, Shev Gaunkar. <laughs> Welcome, Prachi. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> she she has, is the founder of, uh, she's not only a media professional communicator, but she's founder of an application called Cool the Globe. And, and it's a, not only an application, it's a movement for climate action. She has supported and helped several sustainable initiatives and business craft on communication technology. And she is now mobilizing global citizens to fight climate change through technology, innovation, and grassroot action. So her journey started with the question, what can I do about the climate change? So from her was born the Cool the Globe app to help citizens reduce their own greenhouse gas emission to a target. And we will come to this much more in detail later on, because this is also something, uh, Kali, you must be remembering at CLC also a couple of years back, we were also involved with uh, doing this. So, Kali, uh, let's start with you first. So can you please introduce yourself a bit more, uh, more than what we have just now said and introduce CLC and what are the activities of CLC for our viewers? So, so you, 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 um, you, you mentioned most of my previous CD, but if you look on the companies where I'm a board member, it's very much about technology, it's very much about being green. So if you take Vestas, for example, they are the biggest supplier in the world of windmills. NXP is the biggest supplier of semiconductors for electrification of vehicles. Uh, uh, you have uh, 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 also Munch, which is another company I'm part of, which is a special paid a paper company replacing plastics. And then there is a mining company called Bolida, which is the biggest supplier of zinc and copper in Europe, which yesterday announced the first green zinc smelter in the world with zero emissions. That is going to be an investment of 700 million euros. So what I've been working with previously and am working with today is very much in investments in traditional businesses to make them greener. Mm -hmm. CLC is a, a organization that started in Finland and as you said it's 87 members and, and it's, uh, it's almost 70% of the uh, Finnish stock exchange that are members and, we are, and then we have a number of personal members or individuals but we also have cities, universities, it's all about driving a, a systematic and scientific methods of reducing CO2. And we are doing that in basically 15 di different themes. It starts with agriculture, forestry, uh, ICT, manufacturing and services. And then it goes on, on certain topics. And, and we are driving that in groups through webshops and, and workshops but we're also working with other organizations. And that's how I got in contact with you, Ben. Uh, yeah, exactly. Trying to, to try to drive this. Because you need, because this is not, these are complicated matters. And you need to have a holistic view. And many times the political system works in silos, which means that you are, you are disconnecting yourself from the total picture of a systemic way. And you need to have scientific based arguments and, 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 and methods to do that. So that's why I think it's been a, a, a very popular with big companies because we look beyond national borders. Yeah. Because this is a world, this is a planet problem. So it, it's yeah. not EU and it's not Sweden, it's not Finland. It's all of us because if we don't fix this, there is no future. Yeah. So that's why I think it's one of the important messages why we are. But we have started uh, uh, CLC in Finland, gone to Sweden. We are getting Denmark and Norway involved. The next phase is try to get Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Kali. <laughs> it's really I can't agree more than that. You know, it's not a problem of one country. It's humanity problem and humanity created partially. We can discuss about it if it's uh, also the planet which is transforming, but surely we also made a certain impact for that. Now, Prachi, what's about you? Please tell us also your story and uh, how did you create the app? So 
who are you? And, and little, pref- and- <laughs> little young lady who is trying to cool the globe. <laughs> and, and what does the app do? Yes, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice intro. I won't mind calling myself a little young lady who's trying to cool the globe. I'm going to steal that line. Uh, but before that, uh, thank you so much, Ben and Svetlana, for inviting me here. Um, I know finance and climate change are two of your favorite topics. I've seen both of you talk very passionately about it. So the next hour should be very memorable talking to you about these things. Um, and Kale, I'm so honored just to be sharing this stage with you. Um, CSC is such a big support system for initiatives like ours and uh, the work you're doing. Uh, it's it's so nice to meet you, uh, and I'm really looking mm-hmm. forward to learning yeah. from you. Um, so, um, Cool the Globe really had very humble beginnings. It didn't start. Um, uh, I didn't start it thinking that it would grow into this. Uh, it really started. Um, from my dorm room as a young student, um, and it started with a very simple question, which was, what can I do about climate change? Um, And I realized that um, the kind of fight we are fighting uh, to tackle climate change, it really is possible only if the ordinary people get into this fight. Um, The kind of transformation we are looking for, it's only possible when Uh, citizens um, start taking actions into their life and when climate action really becomes a crucial part of our day-to-day lives. Um, And uh, to make that happen, I started thinking of whether there could be a platform which would help ordinary citizens come together um, to fight climate change. Um, And that's how the idea for Cool the Globe was born. Um, And um, so throughout my college years, I worked on building this app uh, which helps individuals like you and I reduce our own greenhouse gas emissions to a target. Um, so what I realize is that if I want to achieve anything, um, you know, be it climate change or be it getting a good score in an exam, um, to achieve anything at all, you need two very simple things. Um, oh, I would love to hear from you, in fact. What, what do you think you need to achieve anything? You need to act. (laughs) (laughs) And and need to have the knowledge. Because I just wanted to add that this was like seven or eight years ago. Uh, Kale, you must be remembering, uh, we were from CLC at UNFCCC at at New York. And there also we have presented, and there was a citizen act, which CLC at that moment promoted in New York, is that we should activate the citizens, that citizens should start coming together and become active uh, in the climate change. I, I think Clive Kale will be able to tell much more about how, uh, what happened to that initiative and how that proceeded. But that was that is very much matching with Prachi, what uh, you also started. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but I think you're absolutely spot on, Prachi, because every decision starts with an individual decision. It's not absolutely. the others. Change start with myself. So you, you're spot on. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And exactly like Setlana also said, uh, you need actions. Um, and in like personally speaking, I experience that in order to do anything at all, I need a clear target for my actions and I need to be able to measure the impact of my actions. So what I saw around me was that a lot of people wanted to do something. They just didn't know what they could do and they didn't know the impact of their contributions. Mm-hmm. Um, And so um, in our app, we really focused on two things. The first was that every person, uh, as soon as they come into the app, they get a clear monthly and an annual target of reducing their own greenhouse gas emissions. Um, So for me, this this month's target is to reduce my emissions uh, by 30 kg. Um, And then they they can see simple day-to-day actions that they can take in their life in order to reach that target. Um, And we have over 55 um, customizable climate actions that people can take, simple actions that they can take in their lives. Um, This can be, um, so if my office is 10 kilometers away and if I go by cycle instead of taking a car, uh, then I save 2 kg of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. If I uh, really resisted the urge to shop this month um, and I did not buy five pairs of jeans, then I saved 10 kg of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, If I did not use AC 
uh, today uh, for eight hours, then I save five kg of emissions. So I can see the impact of my simple actions that I take. And then what a lot of people feel is that what can one person do? What difference is one person going to make? Uh, like Kaleb beautifully said that every change starts with an individual action, but um, it gets difficult to convince that to people sometimes. Um, but I do believe that when there are a lot of people with the same cause coming together, then the collective impact can be extraordinary. And to show the power of that collective impact, we have a global meter on the homepage of the app, which shows the collective savings made by all users combined. Um, and uh, that is essentially what Hula Globe is. And now we have um, citizens from over 55 countries coming together to make changes in their life for climate action. Um, and uh, I'm really seeing the power of citizens uh, coming together to make a big change. Prachi, how many users do you have right now? Uh, so we have 50, uh, 15,000 users right now. So yeah. you need to get 1 billion users multiplied by so to kg, then it's already quite a substantial amount, right, of saving. So WhatsApp has 2 billion users, so I don't see why something like this can't get half of that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. Uh, uh, thanks for sharing. Prachi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks for sharing that story. It's amazing, amazing, uh, inspiring. Uh, no, no, this, she's like the how the greater of India, I would say. <laughs> the same path. So, Kali, I wanted to go a bit on a more kind of serious topic with EU Commission. So, as you know, Svetlana and me, I'm always a serious, the boring, serious old guy. So. <laughs> So I, I, you must. I don't know if you listened to what I just spoke before uh, the show started. So that uh, what I'm is that despite of the great initiative EU Commission is now showing or going, we are still not on our way. So the biodiversity is still under unprecedented attack. The destruction of the rainforest is going on. The CO2 emission only seems to be rising even during the COVID period. So do you think that these policies like the Green Deal, which also CLC was a content provider largely from, from EU Commission, will not end up, and I'm really uh, worried about it, that it will not end up in the same way as the OECD agreement of 1972. I don't know if you remember the polluter pays uh, principle agreement. It was signed in 72, but never, ever nothing happened with it. So how serious do you think EU Commission can implement this? I, I think there are multiple things happening at the same time. I, I think the consumers of tomorrow and the young people represented by, by Prachi, not like the old guys like me, uh, they, they do care about this. And it's very, very serious. Yeah. The other thing, which is that that's a democracy issue. It's a public issue. It's becoming a political issue in many, many countries. Because right now what we experience with the fires in the U.S., we have the floodings in, in Central Europe. Uh, we have the very hot weather in, in the Nordics. It's unprecedented. People are reacting. So that's one thing. The other one is that investors are seeing that a lot of assets will be stranded in the future, especially the fossil based. So there is a huge capital allocation happening in, 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 in the Western world. So from being ESG investments in a small corner of, of uh, for the pension funds, which is basically our pensions in the Western world, they are going more and more of making sure that the assets they are having are sustainable and future-proof. So the money is pushing it. And, 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 and I believe that this, uh, the, the fourth thing of July uh, uh, attempt, which is one year after the Green Deal announcement in Europe, yeah is actually going in the right way. I think we should have included, because it's all based on the EU ETS trading. And mm -hmm. I think we should have been a bit more systematic. I think we should have been focusing a bit more on, on, on other areas as well. I think it's too narrow, but, but, but I, I think we're going in the right direction. The, the problem we will have is how do we, how do we change the old economy? Because if all the steel works uh, steel mills in Central Europe is out of work. Then we have a social problem. We need yeah. to do it in a way where we create new jobs in new industries, which I think this way that they are pushing is the right way forward. But I do still 
think they miss a couple of things. And for you who are specialists like uh, geeks on this, like me, they are not <laughs> focusing enough on what you call scope four and five. Because they are still focusing very much on the footprint and not on the handprint. The handprint is your total effect. So if I take Vestas, for example, they have a small footprint of negative CO2, which obviously they need to reduce. But their handprint is 186 million tons of CO2 reduction per year because they are the biggest producer. So, so I think you need to take it further out and focusing on the mm -hmm. handprint, not the footprint. And you need to drive this a bit harder and make funds available for the society to, uh, to, to change into to new areas. And the other thing I think they're missing, and, and that's basically the carbon sinks. And the carbon sinks, the big one is agriculture and it's forest. Yeah. And, and the deforestation is basically happening, not in the boreal forest, which is the Northern hemisphere. There the forest is growing, it's happening in the Southern. And we need to make sure that countries like Brazil and, and, and other countries have a social justice system that you don't need to cut down the forest to be able to feed your population. And, and, and that's why we need to get the big nations in because poverty is one of the biggest reasons why, why we are having deforestation. It's not because people are evil, it's because yeah. they lack food. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so that's, and the other one I would like to point out to you, because uh, uh, how will we protect the small industry in, in, in Europe? It's called a mechanism called a carbon border adjustment uh, uh, mechanism, which yeah. means, for example, that and they're going into the cement, the steel, the aluminium to start with, but they need to expand that. Because that yep. means that in order to keep the European uh, uh, industry competitive, they will adjust as, as, as a custom duty. If they yep. have a trading system, take Australia, for example, they used to have on the Labour government a trading system for ETS. Uh, the new Liberal government took it away. So if Australian steel is coming into Europe, they need to pay the difference on a custom yeah. duty. They now claim that's against the ETO. Yeah. I do think, because the, the, the discussion is starting in the US and Canada as well, so if the big trading blocks start to, 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 to have a trading system on ETSs, then this will be uh, play, uh, worked out. But, but, but then you need to take that money you get in to help the people out of these industries and into others. Because it's, yeah. it's a huge social problems. It's votes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so I think the right steps are here. And the CBAM is going to be one of the important mechanisms to make sure that we keep the, 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 the small and medium sized the European companies competitive and not importing the problem. Yeah, that's a good point. Ali, what do you think about the carbon uh, exchange because the price you know or what would be your projection of the carbon uh, price in five or ten years so so we have some projects which would like to offset that you know to sell it they plant the trees and then uh, they could sell the co2 yeah yeah so save save the mangroves they're trying to protect yeah. the mangroves so so if you look upon estimates that clc has done so a fair trading amount of ETSs should be somewhere between 40 and 60 euros per ton. 40, today, 40, 40 to 60. 40, 40 to 60. 60. Yeah. And that means today's price in Europe of about 50 euros yeah. is, is okay. But if you yeah. take the total world price of, of, of CO2 emissions today, if you take the total average for the countries, if you include all emissions, and everybody's paying the, on the whole globe, it's actually two dollars. So that yeah, needs exactly. to go up. But if, if you look on the estimate how much the destruction of our planet is costing us in money every year, yeah. that's, I think it's three trillions yeah. of dollars per, per year. year. Yeah, yeah, UNDP yeah. said it, yeah. Three, around yeah. Three, two to three trillion per so, is a loss of the biodiversity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We need to make sure that the price goes up because that's the cost. Otherwise, we're just mm -hmm. going to sell that as a liability to our children. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I, I just... So, yeah, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Kale. And then I'll... So, so I, I think if we can make, and, 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 and CSC was part of that, and that's the, the, the column carbon, 
we want US, Europe, China, Japan, and Korea, if they start to adjust us and start to put in a market-based mechanism, then the rest of the world will follow because then you have the majority of the trading. Yeah, exactly. So Europe will not be enough. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to add one point which I didn't fully agree with you is that uh, you mentioned about the pension funds in Europe, but we got this dat data from Netherlands that uh, the loss of the f uh, rainforest and the Amazon is 30% financed by the Dutch and the Danish pension funds. So our pension funds are still not doing such a good job of implementing. I, I agree with that, but I, I see it as, as, as the tide is changing. So it's more and more of this are being discussed. The Swedish mm -hmm. pension funds used to be in, in, in Brazil as well. They're, they're out now. And, and the Dutch and the Danish, they need to get out. Because if yeah. you ask, because the pension, that's us, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, 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 so we need as citizens, Prashi, to make sure that the pension funds we are having are actually sustainable. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly. Prashi, but then we will ask you again, you know, because you shared your journey while you started. How was it actually easy or hard to get where you are now? And what were the main issues you faced? So what are the issues that citizens are facing also to bring forward the initiatives like the one you have? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, you don't really get a lot of time to think about how has it been. Uh, I think for the most part, it's been very fulfilling. Um, and the difficult part was actually before I started that, this journey. Um, so I always talk about this journey starting from a single question, which was, what can I do about climate change? But even before I could start uh, ask myself that question, there was another question, which was, why should I even care about climate change? Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that I see a lot of citizens struggling with, um, especially here in India, when we see so many is issues around us, we see uh, poverty, we see illiteracy, and it's not really um, fair for a lot of people um, uh, for them to comprehend that they should be they should care about something that seemingly is happening in some other part of the world to somebody else um, in some so many years. Why should we care about this now? Um, and honestly, this is a question that I also grappled with for many many years. Um, and um, I always thought that I wanted to do something uh, for people. Um, but I thought that climate change has nothing to do with people. It only has to do with um, uh, these issues that are have environmental issues or maybe something that's going to happen in some years uh, or melting ice um, or uh, rising sea levels. I thought it had nothing to do with people. And so that that like coming to terms with why I should even care about climate change mm -hmm. was, I would say, uh, the most difficult part. Um, and I tell you about a few people who changed my mind about this. Uh, you know, as a media professional, I happen to meet all kinds of people from all walks of life. Um, and in uh, meet, ha having those experiences taught me that climate change is not about these big, heavy words and impacts that we see in newspapers and reports. It really has to do with our livelihoods. Um, and one of the uh, first people I'd like to tell you about is um, 12 year old boy uh, that I met when I was making a film on uh, the dreams of children and, and what do their aspirations look like. Um, and he lived in a slum not very far from my house. Um, and the day I met him, I asked him a very simple question. I asked him if you could get any wish and it would come true. You can ask for anything in the world. What would you ask for? And I'll never forget his answer because he said, I would wish that my house doesn't get filled with water every year. Um, and uh, we lived in a slum which had uh, a small water body near it. And every time it rained very heavily, his house would uh, get filled with water. And I realized that um, he's not alone. Uh, there are many, many uh, young children like this who live in um, roughly built slums and as weather extremities become more common, more frequent, more intense, there'd be m many young boys like him who have to worry some about something as basic as a shelter above their head. And I realized that this is something that I do care about. Now, 
the second person I would w want to tell you about is um, one of the most inspiring women I've ever met. Um, and I met her when she was around the same age as me. She was 19, um, but she was already married and she had a young daughter. And she had a young child. Um, and I met her when I was working with a displaced community of waste workers in Bangalore in India. And she was a refugee from Bangladesh. Um, the day I met her, I walked five kilometers with her to the nearest school district uh, where she demanded that her daughter be admitted into the school. But they couldn't admit her daughter because uh, she didn't know the language, Kannada, um, and she didn't have the necessary documents um, uh, to file a place into the school. Uh, but this girl, she didn't give up. Uh, for the next two months, every single day, she walked the five kilometers to the school. She sat at the doorstep and she demanded that her daughter get a place into the school. And finally, the school found a way around the technicalities and the language barriers, and her daughter got a place in the classroom. Um, and while this story had a happy ending, there are many other stories like this that don't. Um, and now, what does this even have to do with climate change? So we hear about millions of climate refugees, 10 million uh, every year and counting, who have to get displaced from countries like Bangladesh, countries all over the world uh, because of weather extremities, because of floods, droughts, um, and they have to start their lives from scratch all over again with children in hand. Um, and I realized that this is something that I do care about. And there are just so many uh, incidents like this, countless people um, who taught me more about climate change than I could have ever learned in test books uh, and news reports. And I realized that as ordinary people, we care about very simple things, right? We care about our food, uh, we care about our homes, we care about our livelihoods, and we care about our family. Um, and soon I realized that climate change impacts every single one of those things. Uh, and when I realized that, I decided that I do care about climate change and I do want to do something about this. Uh, so coming to this decision itself, I would say, was the most difficult part of my struggle. Um, but when I did decide that I want to do something about this and I started taking simple actions in my life, that's when I saw everything turn around because it almost became a happy process. It became became a rewarding thing that I was doing in my life. Uh, and that feeling of hopelessness was replaced with a new hope of citizens coming together to take action. Um, so I would say the rest of the part of that this journey has been nothing but fulfilling. Um, <laughs> Yes. You almost made me cry. You know, I just was holding my feet. <laughs> so, then it, it's it's uh, what you said is very true because today also on the BBC there is a report that Sundarbon. When I grew up, it was like the in, in Bangladesh, in Bengal and uh, West Bengal and Bangladesh, the mangrove, which is supposed to be the most beautiful one of the, and it is also one of the world's largest carbon sink, is sinking. The whole Shundarbon is sinking. It is uh, going down. So, so, and in Europe, we have a nightmare with uh, migration. I don't know if you uh, read the news. This was in 2015 or 16 yeah. when we had massive migration, and that was just 1.1 million, and whole Europe came down on its knees. So, just imagine what will happen uh, if we are talking the numbers you are talking about. 10 million or 20 million start heading towards Europe. Yes. It's a uh, it's a doomsday the scenario. The comfortable lifestyle <laughs> will be over. You need to deal with yeah. some other issues. But then. but at this moment we we have it also at our home. I, there used to be a time when what you mentioned, Prachi, that things in the one end of the world does not impact the other end. But climate change right. is impacting. You must have read in Germany now more than 120 or 130 people yeah, died. Exactly. There are yeah. cities underwater. Belgium, Netherlands. In Canada, people are dying of overheating. E e even in Russia, there has now been a, such a massive fi wild uh, fire in the north of Russia, which has never even, the temperature had never gone above zero. Today, it is all burning, that the fire, the smoke of the fire is reaching America. So wildfire is going on. So it's, you see this immense scale of damage going on around the world, which is outside of our hand. So, and, and th in, with this, I would like to ask maybe Khaled. Khaled, do you think that this, because, you know, we have this upcoming event uh, of the EU uh, to ratify and speed up the climate changes. And then we have in October and November the global event uh, when the whole world comes together to talk. Do you think these events will somehow get the politicians 
and the decision makers move faster and take really serious steps? I, I, I think, like in 2018, when it was obvious that we had a, a very, very volatile climate, uh, 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 to, uh, summer 2021 in Europe is a repeat, and, yeah. and in certain extent even worse uh, yeah. when it comes to 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 to, to natural disasters. And, and you know, I don't know how many forest fires there are in Canada. I don't know how many forest fires there are in California. Uh, yeah. uh, you had the uh, rain uh, and, and, and the thunderstorms in Central Europe. You have uh, heat records in almost every single country. Obviously, and nobody doubts today from science that this isn't due, due to the climate change. So I think the politicians need, 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 need to act. And, you know, it's election coming up in Germany, which they, they need to explain to the citizens why they were not prepared. Or why didn't they have done things earlier? Because yeah. like, like, like Prachi was saying, it's individual choices, or, but it's also the votes. And, and it started with green parties. But, but today, yeah. the question is becoming existential. It's what life will we have in the whole planet if we don't act? So I think, and also with the Biden administration coming into the US, we have seen China also putting up and, and reducing the, the carbon in, in China. You have seen what's happening in, in Japan and South Korea. So I, I'm, I'm quite positive. It, it, it's the speed of the change of the society that is worrying me a bit. And I'll give you an example. Uh, of all the money that has gone into the, uh, to help the economy of the pandemic, uh, according to the International Energy Agency, only 2% has gone in to alternative energy, which means we're going to have an explosion of, of, of emissions when we go out of 22 and 23. So we need yep. to act now. So, so, yep. so, so I, 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 I think the alarm bells are coming up, and and and. The now you disappeared a bit, Ben and no, everybody, no. but yeah. now you're back. Well, we yeah. can hear you. <laughs> so I, I'm positive, plus that. The investors know that they will be stranded assets if they don't do anything. So they will move their funds away. Right. Yeah. Um, that's uh, very valuable what you say, Kali. It's, uh, and I really hope that it will be like that, that uh, governments will get into action and citizens will get into action because only together we can really uh, solve Maybe. this problem, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prachi question to you what will be the impact of your project or what is the impact already now and how do you see that i mean what is your vision of the app of the cool the globe yeah um i would say the impact is on so many fronts the first is that um for the first time people have started thinking that they can do something about issues like climate change and it's very empowering for a lot of ordinary citizens to think that they have that power um and and just um just that um just that empowerment itself i think is one of the biggest impacts for me um so uh, we also have a global meter which shows the emission saved by all citizens combined and um, all of the uh, citizens from over 55 countries have saved over a thousand tons of greenhouse gas emissions in the past few months. Um, and we're hoping uh, that it keeps on increasing. Um, so for every like for every hundred people who come to know about the app, who come to know about the movement, maybe two of them uh, start taking actions. But I think even that um, itself, that people are coming to know that there is something that individuals can do about this. I think that itself is also a very big impact. Um, now, where we want to take this is that it's only powerful if global citizens come and join this fight. Uh, so where we want to see this app, like Setlana, you said, we want uh, 1 billion people on this platform. Uh, and we want as many people as possible using this app, as many as po people as possible spreading the word. Um, so th these are impacts on the big scale that we are envisioning. There are so many enhancements that we want to make on the platform also. We want to um, help 
uh, create communities, help create foster communities on the app where people would um, inspire each other to take actions and people can chat with each other and communicate with each other and track the savings made by their organization. Um, we want to make climate action easier for people. Um, where um, the app sort of automatically detects the climate actions that they've taken. So there's so many um, uh, ambitions on the technological front. There are many, many ambitions on the campaigning front. Um, the real uh, target is to just bring climate action to the common man and bring climate action in the lives of each one of us. Um, on um, a very small level, maybe the impacts are that I get so many calls every single day. Uh, so many of them are from policymakers, business owners, big people that I could have never imagined speaking to even a few years ago. Uh, but even more than that, what really touches my heart is the calls I get from ordinary people. Um, uh, so the other day, um, a nine-year-old girl emailed me saying that I don't really have a phone, but I still want to do something in my life to fight climate change. So you tell me, what can I do about it? Um, an 86-year-old um, uh, grandmother, old woman called me and she said that I don't really get out of the house much. I'm very old now. Uh, but I still um, leave the lights open um, in my home in the afternoon. And I'm going to stop doing that from today. And that would be my contribution uh, to this part. Um, <laughs> so another 35 year old man called me up and said that I have purchased a cycle so I can go to my office on a cycle and I can see the emissions I save by doing that and it inspires me so much. Uh, so I think uh, uh, just inspire, being able to inspire ordinary citizens to take up small actions, I would say that is the biggest impact in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Prachi, yeah. uh, did you try to reach to Greta, you know, to unite forces? Because then she would try to help you to reach the one billion. Absolutely. So uh, we've tried to reach an um, organization in India. So we are uh, definitely doing something with Fridays for Future India. Uh, um, we're doing a live with them as of now. But that's a great idea. Like, I, I would love to be able to talk to Greta. She uh, makes but... one post in social media, you know, there is an app and then, ta-da, you have another million people already joined you again. Right? And we are all fans of Greta. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Kale, coming back to you, can you, t because on the website of CLC, can you tell us something about the holistic strategy for EU land use and the bioeconomy and forest development of carbon footprints for products and materials? So what do you mean by that? So what, what we are driving and we are doing with a lot of our partners is to, to go from the footprint to the handprint. I give you an example. I, I, in my previous company, we were fairly early out. So we had an emissions of 11 million per year. Okay. Uh, 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 and we were working on that. And we had, we are one of the, we were the first uh, company uh, in, in the forest industry who joined the science based target because I, I think that's a wonderful tool. It's a very good engineers like it. Then we started to look upon what is our real impact. Then we are one of the biggest forest owners. So that gives us that we have a, a, a carbon uh, a sink of 3 million because you can only count it on the part of the forest that is growing. Not, not yeah. if the forest is not growing, you have nothing, right? Yeah. yeah you need exactly. to grow the forest. So that's 3 million. Then we calculated uh, what is the substitution effect of us replacing uh, fossil based materials. And then we came up that that was basically uh, 20 million, of which more than half is coming from our uh, sawn goods. Because if you build in, in, in wood, you actually create the carbon sink, because that will stand for at least 30 to 40 years. And, and then we just took the, the, the value equivalent of, of, of burning uh, the, the, our, our compared to burning oil. So that's 20 million. So we found out that we were a net contributor of 12 million. So, so, so that's when you go from, because, because we, we, we should, and, 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 and basically all of our footprint on scope one, two, and three was in scope three, because mm -hmm. transportation is where we, you know, we don't have electrical railways in the forest. We don't have, uh, we need to use ships. 
So in scope one and two, we were carbon neutral already. So that's scope three. And, 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 and then we started to look on the whole chain. So we came out that at the end of the day, we were carbon positive. And you can do that for a lot of industries because otherwise you look upon the carbon footprint in your own country and doesn't compare to what you do for others. It's basically coming back. So that's the way we are trying to do it. And then we try now we started a project with some EU funding to do carbon footprints and handprints for cities. Yeah. Because uh -huh. you need to design it in to how you live. Coming back yeah. to the individual choices, because I'm convinced if citizens understand, because they understand global warming, I'm totally convinced about it. If they understand how you build cities of the futures and you can reduce your handprint because that's what your real impact is uh, 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 in doing things differently compared to before. So if you 30% of all emissions in the world is coming from the construction industry. If you mm -hmm. can get the, 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 the kilns away from making cement, because that's yeah. when you take it up to 1,500 degrees, that's where you get the CO2. Yeah. If, exactly. if you can reduce some of the materials uh, uh, to wood, for example, then you have a carbon sink instead. Mm -hmm. and, and guess what? You have a second-hand value. When you demolize the building in a, and it's built in wood, you can reuse it again. So then you go into the circular economy. And, yeah. and, and th th so that's, that's what we are, uh, one of the things we are now doing to help cities to, to become sustainable, looking at their, uh, and we got some EU funding from that, we're very happy. And then we are trying to look across industries to see, for example, because, because a lot of the emissions are in the global supply chain. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. I, and I think we learned in the COVID how vulnerable we are because there's no resilience. Yeah. So maybe this uh, way of making production in the future is too risky. You might mm -hmm. need to have more local suppliers. Yeah, no, no, I completely Instead, agree. It, so so I, I, I think certain things are changing in a good way. And, and, and here I think maybe it's obvious because of my background, I actually think companies are, are more ahead than, than governments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, I agree. But here I had, again, uh, yesterday I had a meeting with one of the big, uh, head of one of the biggest uh, foundation, and they are very strongly financing on this construction. And she said that the EU has put aside money to construct in uh, whole of Europe to make the houses more sustainable, more eco-friendly. But the money what EU had put aside, although it's a gigantic number, it's still nothing compared to what is really needed. And yes. EU is relatively a very rich continent. What are we going to then do with countries like India, where also the same reconstruction, sustainability, adaption of cities, but so much money, where is the money going to come from? I, 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 that's what I talked about before. When we do this systematic change, we need to make sure there are funds available. Be, be, because to be very honest, China and India are, 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 are now having a huge need for electricity or yep. for building a continent. So it means that we probably need to be more generous with them and a bit harder in the richer world because we are part of the problem because when we started and we are basically finished, so we need to make sure that there is a global way of dealing with the rebalancing between the continents. Mm -hmm. We cannot put the same tough measures that we need to put in EU on, in, on the Indian market. That's unfair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we did our industrial revolution 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. I think the former President Trump will not be happy with your statements. No, and I'm not a big Trump fan, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> because because the, 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 this is the first crisis we have right now that is yeah. global. Yeah. You cannot solve it locally. You can only solve it globally. So we need, yeah. because the climate will be bad for us in Europe if we don't help India. Yeah. Exactly. No, absolutely. It's a wicked problem. You know, we call it wicked problems, the problems which are interconnected, interrelated. Sometimes you think you do good and it bumps from the other end, you know, so it's yeah. you know, all but, but I don't think it's a wicked problem because I think this is a problem that people realize 
it's the first time we need to do things together. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And and one of the points which you also mentioned, which is very important, is the logistics, the supply chain. Yes. Where which is really slowly where EU is also kicking in with regulations, everything. And Prachi, I would ask to ask you that when you do your calculation of CO2 emission, do you right. only look at that point of the product or service, or are you also looking at the whole uh, supply chain for the CO2 emission, what Carla just uh, explained? Right. Um, so it really differs from action to action. But what we really try to emphasize on is that it becomes as simple as possible to people. Mm -hmm. um, so um, um, it increases as, as much information as people can put in the app, the accuracy then enhances because people don't always have the patience to uh, give information about the supply chain, uh, supply chain of their product maybe. And then we just average it out um, and then give them a brief idea of what the emissions could be. If somebody has uh, the patience to uh, say um, in their transport, if somebody has the patience to uh, give out the entire information, um, about where they purchased it from, how old is it, um, uh, what is the mileage, uh, then they get a very accurate reading. Um, so while we were making the app, I think this was also one of the very big points of contention was that how accurate can we get and how how farther can we go into the supply chain and into the stream? Uh, so the decision was also, if you ask too many questions to people, they are going to go out the door right away. Uh, so how do we balance that, uh, balance uh, uh, accuracy and um, uh, maybe uh, the simplicity at the same time? So uh, our solution to that was let people answer as many questions as they are comfortable with, and then the accuracy level will then uh, depend on that. But what we also say is that what we're measuring is motivation. Um, we are, uh, along with the reduction in GOG emissions, we are also measuring motivation. So just getting a brief idea is also enough for a lot of people to uh, keep motivated to keep doing something. Um, so um, uh, so that, that's, that's how we function. <laughs> Uh, Prachi, as you know, we are here all action oriented. So it's not the idea to come here, talk, and then go back home and say, "Yeah, Prachi, good." <laughs> Struggle yeah. further to reach your one billion users, right? Yeah. So, what yeah. do you need to get this one billion quicker and faster? What what do you struggle with? How our audience can help you? How maybe a CLC Coalition can help you? Okay. Wow, this is my favorite question of the day. <laughs> uh, so there's so many things, you know. Uh, it said like cool the globe even before it was that. It started as a personal quest that I was taking with my family to reduce our own greenhouse gas emissions by ten percent, and then um, it turned into a platform. And then because people joined in, it turned into a movement. Uh, so what has really helped it grow till now is people. Um, and one of the first things that anyone can do uh, is help us reach more and more people because it's only powerful when we have a lot of people on board. Um, so giving us a platform like you are uh, to reach more and more amazing people who can help scale up the efforts, who can help scale up the campaigns. The stage we have reached right now, we have reached completely organically with no money spent uh, on campaigning and reaching out to people. It's only happened because um, ordinary people related to our mes uh, message and they shared our videos, they shared our mm -hmm. campaigns with other citizens. And that's how we have reached where we have reached. Uh, but what has got us till now, we are going to need something else to reach uh, beyond this stage. Uh, so getting larger platforms to speak is one. Um, and since we are talking about financing uh, climate um, uh, action today, uh, I can say bluntly that the second thing, uh, most important thing that people can help us with is giving us money. <laughs> how much? How much do you need? <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> we are very <laughs> concrete here. You know? um, um, but uh, yes, I, I think just um, uh, financing is something which would al always help scale up the campaigning effort, which would help scale up the application efforts. Um, and any amount, I think, is, is a good amount. But um, Setlana always tells me to get on a clear figure of how much do we exactly need. And I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Um, but, but yes, uh, 
uh, very precisely on these two fronts um, uh, on helping us campaign and helping us reach as many people as possible, getting into partnerships, collaborations, so we can, uh, because, so a lot of people always ask me, uh, when we are talking to investors or funders, they ask me, who are the, your closest competitors in this area? And I say that in the field we work in, there are no competitors, they're only collaborators. Uh, so uh, as, um, as many of us work together, I think our work gets even more enriched. Uh, so um, uh, partnerships, platforms and uh, investments, I think these are the three areas we definitely mm -hmm. um, uh, to have. Prachi. It, it is an English-based platform, right? Or is it uh, local language? Yes, it's English. Can't you send me just a link? You know, because we in CLC has a lot of data of carbon footprints yeah. on things. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and there is in Finland a similar application. It's one especially on the footprint of food. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's coming back to your question, Ben and Sveta, earlier that this would meet, okay. yep. you know, you know, meat production is one of the biggest emissions. Yep. And, and, and there is people want to know now in the in, in Northern Europe, especially if it's close by or if it's imported, because then it's a different yep. footprint. Mm -hmm. right. So, so if, if you have any, can't you give me your co contacts? And I will yeah. no, we don't give contact, contact of Prachi. No, we keep it secret. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, we yeah. must connect you guys. No, because course. it's it's we are all fighting the same battle. We yes. are all trying to save the future of our Absolutely. planet and of the next generation. So, oh, and that's what Prachi said. It's collaboration. And, and Kale, what would your point be? How can people around the world, because uh, t today our program is being watched by a lot of foundations and universities and um, investors worldwide. How can they support CLC and CLC initiatives? So, so one, one of the thing I mentioned, and that's the global call on carbon, which we went out together with many organizations and it's a lot of universities, a lot of individuals, a lot of companies have signed it. It's only about making a fair price on carbon because that mm -hmm. will be the driver. So that, that's one thing. Or you can join as organizations or as individuals into CLC. But at the moment, to be fair, Prachi, it's, it's very much a European focus at this moment, even though we understand that we need to take this out in the world. But you know, it's, 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 it, it takes some time. And, and, and when it comes to organization, we have fairly strict rules. We actually want them in the future to be part of science-based target. Otherwise, they shouldn't be with us because otherwise they haven't done any commitments. And, 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 I, and I, think, I think it's moving ahead, but to join the call on Corbin, I think it's very important yeah. because that, that's, that's just a, a thing that we've done together with some partner organization globally yeah mm -hmm. uh, is the signatory yeah. yeah that's very interesting mm -hmm. and uh, and one another topic i wanted to touch is covid so Kale, in your opinion how has covid impacted the development of climate related policies and awareness so so i i mentioned it a bit because the way i look upon covid it is actually it started with what I believe, without having ever any conspiracy theory, it started actually with an unsustainable animal husbandry. You yep. mix, you mix, and, 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 and that's a sustainability question. Then it fairly fast went into a, a problem of uns, un, uh, resilience in the global supply chains, right? Yeah. Yep. And, and we are saying, and that tells us that we have built very risky supply chains or value chains across mm -hmm. the globe. We are, we are basically focused too much on price and, yeah. and we pay the price now. So if, if that was smart yeah. or not, I, I think we learned that. And the third one is that I said before is that of all the investment money in recovery, only 2% are going into to better energy, which yeah. means that when we take off after the COVID, we will actually increase uh, uh, our emissions, which means that we yeah. must 
must work even harder in the years of 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. and, and, and today, just to give you a number, only 7% of the electricity generated on this planet is coming from wind. Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. hmm. Right. So, 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 so then we have, then we have uh, the, the traditional water power, which is fairly big. Mm -hmm. Then we have the nuclear, but the biggest by far is the carbon. Cool. And if we yeah. go into electrification of the society, that means that we're going to use even more electricity. So, we, mm -hmm. so, 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 you know, for Europe, Germany, Holland, Belgium, Spain, Italy, they need to do something on the grid. Because mm -hmm. more electric, electrical car, more use, and more carbon if they don't do anything. So, so, so we have challenges. And I think it's the same in India. Because in India, most of the power is generated by carbon, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think yeah, coal yeah, power yeah. station yeah. and hydro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Hydro is not so big in India, but, but, yeah. but carbon, yeah. Coal. Yeah. And, 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 and India is a low wind country. So even if you yeah. invest a lot in wind power, it's not blown that much there. Yeah. So you need to go to hydrogen. So what, we, what do you suggest, Kali, to do about it? I, 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 think, I, think, I think we need to put more effort into the wind and we need to go to the hydrogen, which means mm -hmm. that uh, you, you generate hydrogen and, and, and you use that because that's the same as a battery. Yeah, exactly. And, and, that, and, and that cost is coming down fairly fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but the initial investment still remains quite a quite a big amount. Yes, and and that can but, be a hindrance. If, yes, but if we know the cost is three trillion dollars of what we're doing today, yeah. I, I I I think that's the way we need to look upon it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, but that, that's exactly the view. I think that the scientist or UN is also looking at it. That they are yes. looking at it at the whole view. But unfortunately, our politicians, in my opinion, are looking at very narrow views. And then yeah, you they, come they to are this. looking in the silos. They need a system. Exactly. Things. And then you have these problems like 2% of the money goes to the uh, renewable energy and 98% somewhere else because nobody's looking at the whole picture. And that's the worrying part. And uh, Prachi, what do you think about how did COVID impact you? I mean, cool the globe. Yes. Was, was it positive or negative? So there was a joke going around a few days back. I don't know if you've um, read it. So it said um, climate change should have the publicist of COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> it that's, is true. It is completely true. <laughs> so uh, the day we start acting on climate change with the same urgency and awareness that we are uh, about COVID-19, I think that would in itself would uh, be a big change. Um, but I think it all, it's also created a lot of hope because it's shown that we truly can bring about a lot of change in a very short duration as long as we are serious about it, as long as we have that awareness in the grassroots. So now when I go out on the streets, I see every single person wearing a mask uh, from every section of society. Um, uh, I see people who are even living on the streets, but they still have a mask on. Um, and that is the kind of um, uh, the level of awareness and penetration that I could have never imagined happening in my surroundings. So if we can do that about COVID-19, then maybe there's hope for that to happen um, uh, for an issue like climate change. That's a very good one. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to know what Kale, why, why do you think that COVID-19 got so much publicity more than climate change while in fact climate change people are warning about it from 1960s already yeah, I, I think the difference is it became so obvious uh, 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 because you, you you got people being sick the climate change is actually a worse pro problem because it's sneaking a little bit every day and you see it over a longer period uh, uh, however I was very worried in the beginning of the um, uh, uh, of the COVID because countries suddenly became very nationalistic, not at all helping each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I give you an example, uh, uh, I, 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 Munlicke, which is a healthcare company. We were sending uh, equipment to Italy. When Kali, are you with us still? 
Kale, Kale, are you still online? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, oh okay, perfect. Your picture had frozen. Yeah. So, so, but I think over time in the COVID, we learned that we need to, to, to work together. Otherwise, it won't. And, and, and that's a good experience. And, 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 and if the world can get a, a vaccine in such a short time, if it's real urgency, if we, if we can get the same urgency to get, you know, new power solutions or hydrogen coming uh, mm -hmm. by using, uh, you know, science, uh, yeah. uh, on the climate side, I, 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 I'm actually quite positive. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and the assets are available. I mean, uh, many years ago, I was told that to solve all the world's SDGs, the UN SDGs, you need 1% of the global GDP. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 just wiped out more than 4% of the global GDP. Yes. So, so the money, where did that money come? So that means the money is there. I mean, uh, I was talking to the head of the Hong Kong Central Bank. They manage $10 trillion dollars. I mean, I don't even know how many zeros are on it. I can't tell you. <laughs> it's, it's a tiny island, $10 trillion. So if these money, and, and they are now getting also very conscious, especially because of the COVID and everything, they are also becoming more and more conscious about sustainability, impact, climate change. So the fund is there. Somehow there is a kind of miscommunication between the funds, availability, and the science or the requirement of the businesses and the projects. I agree with that. It, 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 it's just a, a question of putting your, your priorities right. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like uh, people are seeing the urgency, but they are still uh, sp like spectators, you know, uh, the same with impact investing. Banks uh, now starting acting, but still a lot of them are still observing. They're like spectators. So we need to transform from spectators to actors because it's becoming really obvious that the climate change is happening and the nature yeah. is showing us with every year more and more. Guys, it is happening. It is happening in various parts of the world. <laughs> right. So um, do you have any more question or should no, no. we round up with yeah, yeah, the I, last uh, message for our audience? Exactly. So usually we ask our guests to speak out and uh, send a, like a message to the audience, call to action from your side, Kali, and from your side, Prachi. And I'm really happy just to speak out loud that so many different generations and countries are meeting here at our TV show. <laughs> It's really inspiring, both of you. Uh, I'm blown up by your energy. So now call to action from you, Kali, to the audience. What would you say? So, so my call to action is don't be a spectator. Be an active participant in this journey and start changing yourself because you cannot ask other people to change if you don't change yourself. Thank Great, you very thank much. You. And Prachi? <laughs> <laughs> wow, we put so well. Uh, I don't know how to, how else uh, how else I could have put it, uh, but yes, you know, start by taking actions, and not just because you have to, but I think it just makes your life a lot better. Uh, it gives you a lot of happiness, um, and uh, I've realized that since I have made climate action a part of my life, it has made me a healthier person, uh, a better friend a better um, it's just improved my life in all other areas as well um, mm -hmm. so take climate actions because it's just a happy thing to do um, and if you're wondering where to start from uh, start with something that you're uh, that start at a pace that you're very comfortable with uh, you can along with me take a pledge to reduce your emissions by 10 percent um, and that is something that's very achievable something that anybody can do and start with a climate action which resonates with your life goals uh, so it doesn't have to seem difficult. Uh, it should be something that you do happily. Um, and um, just just join in this movement because um, it's um, uh, most... So when I was in school and I used to go through my history books, I used to think uh, there's so many exciting things happening in our history, you know, all of these wars and battles and declarations of independence. And I used to wish that I was born in that time when the exciting things were happening. I used to think our times are very boring. Um, but what I'm realizing now is that we are born in perhaps some of the most defining decades of human uh, existence. And what we do now is going to determine not only our future, but the future of many more generations. Mm 
So as much as it is a responsibility, it's an opportunity. Um, and it's so wonderful that our actions can have such a um, meaningful impact. Um, so um, uh, so that's it, you know, uh, join, uh, join climate action. <laughs> Yeah, Thank you, Prachi. That was a long call to action, but a good one anyway. Yeah, exactly. I was completely <laughs> jumped on. I didn't know what else to say. I thought Kale gave such a beautiful, he summarized everything. He took away your call to action, but you even added to that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Thank both you of you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And uh, remember, you receive a honorary membership on Chamomile. Both Jasmine of them are on. Yeah, both of yeah, them are registered. You already registered. Okay, yeah, yeah. then I will inform the team to upgrade you both. Oh, right. so thank you. Thank you. And, and thank enjoy you. the summer. I hope it's not too hot, not too cold, not too much it's water too hot. around. It's too hot. Just you are in a good place <laughs> to still enjoy the summer. Kale is having fun. He's in Spain. <laughs> and oh, Prachi wow. is trying to swim to the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere it is flooded. Let's stop on the positive note. <laughs> okay. No? okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Yeah, that uh, was yeah. a good end of the season two, I think. Yeah, right? it was uh, wonderful. The, I mean, it was our favorite topic, and, and both the speakers were amazingly. Uh, I mean, I was sometimes dumbfounded by the passion and the knowledge both of them had. That was amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. Uh, and the more we are in this impact investing sector, the more I see that they are such people who are doing things for our planet. We are not alone. And there are so many more. And it's great to see. And I believe that we can do it. If all the people like Kale and Prachi are there, mm. it would work. Absolutely. So, so with this, I guess we wish you very nice summer vacation. Yeah. We see you end of August or mid of mid August. Of August mid of August. Because to, today the season two finishes. And those yeah. who want to attend the course and learn how to do good and money at the same time, join us on the 16th, 17th and 26th of August this year, of course. <laughs> and learn about impact investing so thank you thank you for watching us act bye for now and act with impact <laughs> act with impact <laughs> bye welcome to swiss impact with banerjee's i'm svetlana and i'm ben in season two we will be traveling around the globe out of switzerland and bring amazing leaders from businesses thought leaders political leaders of course, investors and experts who are working at implementing and realizing all the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, better known as SDGs. And they are also making profit. Hello, I am Amina Gurifakim and I'm the sixth president of the Republic of Mauritius. My name is Parvati and I'm a musical artist and the founder and CEO of Parvati Foundation. I'm Alicia Adish Bishan. I'm an entrepreneur here in Adish Bishan. I'm running on one side a financial services company. You know, hundreds of deal, deals a month, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. are seeing more things happening in this impact world. And this is yeah. because, look, the world is changing. So join us to discover impact investing access. See you every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Central European time at Swiss Impact with Benedict. See you on Friday. Act with impact.